In this video, we're going to look at how to create custom resources using CloudFormation. Now, you might ask why would, would we need to create custom resources and not always you will get all the resources available inside CloudFormation. For instance, AWS comes up with a new service which has its API available, but they may not or be a little bit late in including it in cloud formation so for that you'll have to create your own custom resource which basically calls a lambda and inside the lambda you invoke the api to create that resource so that's how it's done or you could have your own scenario where you have to create a resources which is not a aws resource but it could be a on-prem resource or similar thing then you can use lambda to invoke or create that resource so there are different reasons why you might want to create a custom resource and resource custom resources are two kinds like lambda backed or sns backed custom resource so in this video we are going to look at an example of lambda backed custom resource but for SNS backed custom resource, when you associate an Amazon SNS topic with a custom resource, you use the SNS notifications to trigger custom resource provisioning logic. And now let's look at an example of a Lambda backed custom resource. So we are going to have this cloud formation template that I have created and we'll need to create a Lambda function that would create a resource for you. So let's assume that SQS is not available in CloudFormation, but it's available via AWS API. So what we are going to do is create a Lambda function that would create a queue for you. It will also delete a queue for you when needed. So that's where our Lambda function will be invoked. So let's create a Lambda function for that. So we have this lambda function creation process inside our cloud formation template so this aws lambda function type will be created and in the code section we have this zip file so basically this code will be zipped and the substitute with r will basically add this code to the code section and will substitute any variables with the actual values. That's what the sub does. And the R will basically, this pipe emulator will append all the lines next to each other. You don't have to use the slash N for new line. So here we are using the AWS SDK for our Lambda function. So we are writing our Lambda code over here. And we are invoking the SQS API and we are creating a response object for cloud formation so we'll send a response back to the cloud formation template from our lambda once we receive a request so you could have a request type of delete over here so when you're deleting a cloud formation stack you'll delete the queue as well so that's where you have this request type of delete and over here in the handler we are creating a queue so if the request type is delete we'll delete the queue but else we're going to create a new queue and while creating if we get an error we'll send a response back with the response dot fail status and if the creation of queue is successful we're going to send response dot success status back and this response over here is this cfn response library so depending on that cloud formation will get in response back and this lambda functions should have a iam role so i've pre-created this lambda function role called lambda custom role so here is that role and it has two policies one of them is the sqs full access you basically just need to give a read and write access but i've gone ahead and given full access so don't try this in production and you have this log policy where the lambda needs to log inside cloud cloudwatch so you can look at the logs of lambda so that's our cloudwatch logs policy so you can also create your cloud formation or the iam policy inside the cloud formation but we have included it as a role 
so we have that we have our lambda function which basically receives events from cloudwatch and creates or deletes a queue and sends a response back so that's pretty much it and here is the calling portion of it so we have this resource called sqs function which is like a custom resource and it's a lambda call out and the properties we are going to pass in the arn of our lambda function that we created so it's sqs operations function that's the lambda function we are going to create and we're going to pass the arn here in the service token so that's how you call the lambda as a custom resource using this type so once that's done in the output section what we are going to do is we are going to print the status of our custom lambda callout so the status of this callout so with this sqs function it's going to invoke this function and over here this is the status like in the response data we have the status as error or success so that is what we are going to print in the output section so we are going to print the sqs function status so our sqs function will have a status in the response data and that's what we are going to print and initially we have initialized the response data over here and we are going to create a queue called my queue name and you can pass in a name parameter as well to your lambda function but we're going to keep it simple for this example i'm going to refresh and we have this lambda call out calling our lambda function over here validate the template and initially my lambda is blank i don't have any code in it now i'm going to create a stack out of it the template will be uploaded to this location i will click next and i'll name my stack name click next click next click create over here and i'm going to refresh and the create is in progress and now you'll see that lambda function is created so i can go here refresh it's still creating let's view the events and it says create complete so let's refresh our i'll just go back out and come back again and see our lambda function has been created and it will have the role that we had assigned lambda custom resource in the iam section and the code is the one that we had passed in and over here we'll see if the event type that is passed by cloud formation is delete we are going to delete our queue and send a response back as success we could have put it in if else if the delete was successful or not and stuff like that but if here if we are creating a queue and if we get an error message we will send a response as failed or success and we'll also send response data so that reminds me let, let's check response data in our output section and it says success and that's the value that we had passed as success and let's see if our queue got created so i'm going to go to sqs and you can see over here our queue is created and now we're going to delete our stack and we'll we'll see what's the output i mean we won't be able to see once we delete it but we'll see if the queue got deleted because we also have provided the instructions what happens when the stack gets deleted so I'm going to go here, delete stack, click on delete. So this will delete our Lambda function, our custom resource, and whatever we had created. We didn't create an IAM role inside the lamp inside our cloud formation, so it won't delete the IAM role. But if you had created it as a part of cloud formation stack, it would have been deleted, the IAM role. So go here, go to Lambda. So it's deleted, go to SQS, refresh, it's gone. So our IAM role is still there. 
because it was not created via cloud formation it was created separately so this is how you create your cloud formation custom resources you usually don't have to use this much but you never know you may want to use this in some scenarios so this was the video for creating cloud formation custom resources